In December of 2004, NASA Special Agent Dan Oakland was wandering the halls of the launch complex at Cape Canaveral, Florida, along with a security guard by the name of Henry Butler. The two had found themselves in a dark corner of the complex that had been forgotten for some time. They stumbled across a dark, locked room that hadn't been opened in many decades. Inside, they found dust, mold, rats, and also a large box. With their curiosity piqued, they opened up the box only to find something confounding. Two blue spacesuits with the nameplates 007 and 008. Blue was never the color of any official spacesuit in the U.S. space program, nor was it typical for suits to be labeled with these numbers. It was clear that the suits weren't from the Mercury program, or Gemini, or even Apollo. The discovery of the suits was notable enough that it caught the attention of journalists and space historians alike. The suit labeled 008 also had something else written on it. A name. Lawyer. It was determined that the name was likely that of Richard E. Lawyer, an Air Force test pilot who had some dealings with NASA, but was, in fact, never an astronaut. Researchers in 2015 finally searched through newly declassified Pentagon documents to find that Lawyer was, in fact, one of 17 astronauts set to launch into space in the 1960s as part of a secret military space program. The predecessor to this secret mission was named Corona, a secret spy satellite space program designed to take imagery of Soviet military bases. The secret satellites were data-gathering successes, but they did have some major flaws. The camera technology was flawed, and recovering the film from the satellites was hit or miss. All of the satellites were unmanned, and the Corona missions were ultimately considered a strategic failure. But out of that failure came an idea. Put spies into space aboard secret capsules that could take better pictures and gather better information about the Soviets. Called the Manned Orbiting Laboratory, or MOL, the mission outlined an orbiting craft that could deploy spies into space and serve as a docking hub for the U.S. military's space program. However, while this was the secret intention of the program, NASA and the military declared that the program was really just one of the next steps to get man to the moon as a cover to the public. The idea of secretly having spies in space gathering secret information may sound absurd, but if you know anything about the ideas of the US military during the Cold War, this was one of the tamer ones. The mole was built, and it housed a camera system that was of higher resolution and higher technology than any camera system that was in existence at the time. After the mole was built, the military worked with NASA to launch the capsule into space aboard the Gemini rockets available to them at the time. On November 3rd, 1966, NASA launched one of the first prototypes of the mole missions in an unmanned mission to test whether their group of imposters or spies, could be sent into space. While the first unmanned mission was a success, the mole program was unexpectedly canceled shortly after by President Nixon in 1969, likely due to better satellite imaging technology being developed. Theoretically, this cancellation came before any spies were put into space. Theoretically. As for the imposters, or astronauts, or spies, that were planning on launching with the Mole missions, Richard Lawyer returned to the Air Force shortly after the cancellation. But there was another name on the secret mission roster that was notable. It was that of Richard Truly. Truly, now a former space spy, eventually became the administrator of NASA in 1989. All of this mystery surrounding these secret space missions is ripe. For conspiracy. While the 008 suit was correlated to Richard Lawyer, the original wearer of the 007 suit is still unknown. The true intentions of the Mole program were declassified to the public in 2015 by the Pentagon, but much is still unknown about what actually took place back then in this top secret mission. Did the US really send spies into space under the guise of doing mundane research for the space race? Or were there never imposters in space and the mission really was cancelled like the government says it was? You be the judge.